welcome to Summer Reads episode Digging Up Fun with Miss Amanda and her friends. We're going to see if Tulip wants to come. I hope you all remember how to call her. So, I hope all of you had a really great weekend. And I hope all of you are getting your reading logs in. Have you all been reading? I know Miss Amanda's been reading. Have you been checking out the books that we read last week? I bet you have. So today we are going to talk about ge geology or some people have a job and they're called a geologist. I don't know if you can see that. Geologist. Geologist. Can you say that at home? Geologist. It's really easy. Let's say it together at home. One, two, three. Geologist. Good job, guys. I know that you can say it. We got something from National Geographic because I love National Geographic. They also have kids' National Geographic magazines. And we have all these stones. Let's call on Tula. Do you guys remember how to call on Tula? I don't think I heard you. You have to speak up loud. That's right. Tulip. Tulip. I think I see Tulip. Tulip. Hi, Tulip. We are going to be digging up stones today. And since you want to be a farmer and you like digging in the grass and in the dirt, do you want to dig up with us? But you hung out with Archie. She says that you guys didn't see her hanging out with Archie. Well, if you don't want to dig up with us today, can you go find Tony, the T-Rex? Okay. Say bye, Tulip. She's going to go find Tony. Tony. And I'm going to get my hat on because what did I say? Paleontologists wear a hat, and so do geologists, because they're out in the sun. <clears throat> We're not in the sun today. But, hi. Miss Amanda. Tony, hi. We, hi. Wow, you came just right in time. Sweet. We are learning about geologists. Oh, I like geology. Well, geology studies earth process. Geologists conduct studies that locate rocks in certain important metals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the mines that produce them and the methods used to remove the metals from the rocks. So geologists have a lot of jobs to do, not just digging up rocks. If you're fascinated by rocks and spend many hours digging in the backyard, um, you can find interesting example, examples, like you can find leaves, you can find stones, you can find fossils, you can probably even find bones. You might be a budding geologist, a science who studies all things related to Earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Miss Amanda, I'm kind of like a, a pizzaologist. I like to study all kinds of pizza and how it was formed with its cheesy goodness. A pizzaologist. Can you guys say pizzaologist? I think they said it just right. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we are, because they contain clues about what the Earth was like in the past, different rocks form under only certain conditions. And even the dullest gray lump of a rock can tell us something important about our past. Yeah, like how the Earth was formed. Exactly. Do you think it's great to learn about our past? Um... Yeah, it's always good to learn about the past. It's fun digging up answers. It is fun digging up answers because that's how we get museums like the Field Museum. They have lots of bones, lots of artifacts, lots of stones like this. This is an amethyst. And this is a quartz. And in our digging up today, when we, we are going to dig, 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 dig. We're going to find argonite, amethyst, tiger's eye, fluorite, desert rose, and pyrite. Can we dig for this stuff in our backyards? We can dig for this stuff in our backyards. But will we find cool gems like that? Mm, no. Well, you might if somebody had buried it and wanted to have fun with the next person that moved into the yard. But a lot of these stones are found in Afghanistan or Argentina, which we'll learn about in our crystal guidebook from National Geographic today. Geologists study earth process such as Earthquakes, landslides, floods, volcanic eruptions, and they survey the land. They draw off safe to save building plans. So it is the geologist's job to make sure that the land is safe to put big buildings. They have to see if any how many times an earthquake happens in one day. Because if you put a big high building in a spot, then an earthquake happens, and that building will come tumbling down. That's why they have to study these land masses. They have to study these rocks. They have to study basically everything about the earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, geologists study some of the society's most important problems. I would say a lot of that is a society's most important problems like pollution and waste management and natural hazards such as floodings or erosions. There are a lot of floodings. Do you know where some of the floodings take place? Um, well there's uh, some here in Illinois actually. Mm-hmm. Many, many years ago, everything used to be all e like big and up and down and there wasn't a lot of flat land was there no yeah in time it becomes flatter geologists they they go and they discover they take water samples and they take land samples and then they bring it back to their um where they do all their science stuff in their building and then they process all of it to see if that land is safe to live. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Wow. Do you know anything about geology? Um, I just know that they like rocks. Yeah. Well, today, <clears throat> we are using a brush because well, geologists have bigger brushes than Miss Amanda. But what you do is you have to chisel away. You see? Chisel, chisel, chisel. And we have to keep chiseling. And it, 
and it takes forever. And then they take their little brushes and they just, they just scoop it away. See what I'm doing? Yeah, I see. You have to have a lot of patience to dig up fun. <clears throat> and then we take this magnifying glass. And then when we find one, such as the floor right here, they look at it, see? <laughs> mm -hmm. Fluorite kind of looks like you, Tony. Yeah, a little bit. It's green. Uh-huh. We got rose quartz. That one's my favorite. Rose quartz is your favorite? Yeah. Rose quartz is my favorite. They have to look because in every single gem, there are minerals. And the minerals tells us about our past. The min all, everything that you ever dig up comes from our past. If it's been sitting there for years, like fossils, for example, they tell us on what you guys ate. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fossils tell us how big a dinosaur is. And fossils can tell us how fast they may have ran. Fossils can tell us um, about their eating habits. Just like this geode can tell us where it's been. I think this geode has seen a lot in its lifetime. Yeah, it has. Mm -hmm. For example, geodes. Perhaps geodes, the most fascinating of all rock formations. Geodes are hollow rocks in which beautiful crystals have formed. These round rocks get their name from the Greek word shape of the earth. They may look plain on the outside, but you can never know what glorious beauty awaits within a geode until you crack it open. And pyrite, which is also known as what, Tony? Fool's gold. That is correct. The shiny yellow gold color of pyrite crystals often led people to believe that they had found gold. And so it was nicknamed... Fool's gold. Its name comes from the Greek word fire because it could create sparks when struck against steel. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. And quartz. A quartz crystal. We dug up this quartz crystal too. Quartz is the second most abundant mineral in the Earth's continuing crust, and it is found in many varieties and colors. Amethyst, tiger's eye, citrine, all types of quartz. No matter how distorted a quartz crystal may be, the long prism faces always make a perfect 60 degree angle. In the 17th century, studies of the quartz laid the groundwork for modern crystallology. Whoa, like gemology. Yeah. That is a word that I didn't know. I thought that it was just geologists, but you could call it gemology. And this was the stone for that groundbreaking word. And tiger's eye. Tiger's eye is one of my favorite. Tiger's eye is a lustrous gemstone. Its golden brown in color occurs mainly in South Africa and East Asia. Ooh. It is a member of the quartz family and has the hardness of a 7.0 on the scale. Hey. About the same hardness steel. Roman soldiers wore tiger's eye for protection in battle and it is thought to have many mystical powers. Yeah, in many cultures, 
people use stones as healing devices. I did know that. There are a lot of people out here that do use crystals for healing, such as if you have a migraine or if you have a backache, a lot of people use them to keep negativity away as well. Mm -hmm. So not only are you a geologist, but you're a geologist that has no negativity. Yeah. Argonite is a very fascinating stone. It has Argonite has all these little clusters. They it forms naturally in shells of mollusk and in the exoskeletons of the corals. Isn't it beautiful? People use argonite in saltwater uh, uh, aquariums, not only because it replaces the natural reef conditions, but also because it keeps the pH balance of the water close to the levels found in nature. It's cool. The city in Spain in which it was first identified in 1797 Wow. In the United States, many have called it the cave flower. Amazing clusters of argonite crystals are now being found in Morocco, which is where your specimen came from. And this is the rose quartz. This is half of the geode. And this is the 60 degree angle of a quartz. Look at its point. This next stone is called amethyst. Now I brought out the big amethyst because the little amethyst was tiny. Amethyst, a member of the quartz family, can range in color from light pink to deep purple, sometimes with red or blue, secondary hues. Its name comes from the Greek word not intoxicated because in ancient times it was to believe it was believed to prevent drunkenness. In fact, wine goblets carved out of the amethyst were not uncommon in the Greek and Roman times. Wow, Tony, we sure are learning a lot. Yeah, we are. I love this next one, fluorite. Fluorite is relatively salt mineral found throughout the world. Some samples of fluorite will glow under ultraviolet light, a property called fluorescence. Fluorite is used in many high-performance telescopes, microscopes, and camera lenses because it allows crisp images to be seen even at high, magnif high magnification. It is usually light green or purple. You can't see the purple in this one, sort of. Our next stone is hematite. Hematite is a material from an iron oxide that is typically steel gray in appearance. Before it is published, it will often create a rust red streak when rubbed on another surface. Its name comes from the Greek word blood for its blood red colored streak used using and infrared at NASA's Mars Global located two disposals of hematite on the red planet. NASA knows about this? Yeah. I love NASA. Me too. Wow, NASA must work with all the great scientists. Rose quartz, unlike most varieties of quartz, is usually pink stone, 
only rarely displayed well-formed crystals. Rose quartz is highly prized pink color believed it came from the iron, titanium, and magnesium impurities within this stone. Also, a great known fact about rose quartz, it's beautiful as a necklace, and you can keep it on. Rose quartz is for self-love. And you know what, Tony? I love you. I love you too, Miss Amanda. Aww. And you know, I know everybody at home doesn't need rose quartz because you all love each other and we all need to give each other a big, great hug right now. Mm -mm -mm. Snowflake Obsidian. Snowflake Obsidian is black and white. It's black with white speckles. It looks like snowflakes. It really, really does. The regular type of obsidian is a volcanic glass form when certain types of lava cool so rapidly that the crystals cannot form. When the lava cools more slowly, crystals can form and give the rock a texture appearance. The crystals that sparkle the surface of the snowflake obsidian are called sphericals, and they are formed from the mineral a type of quartz. Do you kind of see the snowflakes on there? That's why they're called snowflake obsidian. Aventrine. Aventrine is one of the many varieties of quartz. Usually occurs as a green stone. Through some blue, gray, orange, or brown specimens can be found. Small flakes of mica or hematite can make Eventrine sparkle and glisten, an effect called eventress. This stone was discovered accidentally by the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese glass marker in the 1700s who gave it the name Ventura, meaning by chance. It has been often considered a good luck stone, and some people believe it can enhance creativity, imagination, it even thought to stimulate dreams, promote a positive outlook on life, and improves people's vision. Well, I guess we all need to wear some adventuring then. Next, we have sodalite. The bright blue mineral got its name from its high sodium content. Specimens often contain white veins or streaks that make it particularly beautiful, and large pieces are often sliced into slabs and highly polished for collectors. Large quantities of sodalite are found in Afghanistan and Brazil. Though it was originally discovered in Greenland, Sodalite has been called the Poet Stone and the Stone of Truth, reflecting the belief that it is a stone, rational thinking, and clear communication. Under ultraviolet light, some sodalite specimens will glow a pale yellow color. A variety of sodalite called hackamantite fluorescence in shade of red and orange. That's kind of cool. That is. There is an orange. Do you see this, Tony? Yeah. <clears throat> Red jasper. Oh, boy. Jasper is a hard, opaque stone, gemstone with a special characteristic. A variety of chalidony, a type of quartz made up of microcrystals. Jasper is very smooth and does not flake when cut and it can be polished to a high luster. It is ideal for making into jewelry, goblets, or other decorative objects, which made its favorite gemstone in ancient times. What makes jasper even more appealing, however, is the fact that other minerals, and even organic minerals, 
can make up as much as 20% of a piece of jasper. These impurity product stones in a rainbow of colors, often with rings, bands, stripes, or even spots that make each piece unique. In fact, the name jasper comes from the Greek word meaning spotted stone. Some ancient civilians believed that jasper could drive away evil spirits and protect against snake and spider bites. Several Native American tribes thought it could bring rain. Today, many people wear or carry jasper to bring about tranquility, alleviate stress, and reduce negativity. Wow. That was very interesting. Yeah, it was. Should we pour water on this to make our digging go faster? Yeah. So what we did at the Wilmington Public Library is went on to Amazon and you can find these digging tools. They come in a box and then you can spend all day being a geologist yourself. These are all some of the stones that we have already dug up. But I think if you pour a little water on it. And you just let it sit for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It'll turn mushy. Yeah, well. And then we get it started. Miss Amanda will take pictures of all the process afterwards. But I have the water sitting on it. Did you all at home learn everything that needs to be learned about? Being a geologist? I did, I did. You did? Yeah. What was your favorite part? Um, I like the stones. Like the crystals. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a good thing that we're learning about how to be geologists. Because in our other Digging Up Fun episodes, we will be learning on how to make our own volcanoes. Oh, that sounds like fun. We will be learning about fossils. Ooh. So it's a good thing that we're learning about this. I hope you're all taking notes. And don't forget, you can always find great books about being a geologist at your Wilmington Public Library. All right. Well, goodbye, Miss Amanda. I'm going to head out. OK. Are you going to go order pizza? Did this make you hungry? Um, yeah. I knew because he's a pizzaologist. Uh, Bye, Tony. Bye, Miss Amanda. And I hope all of you have a great day. Look out for Miss Amanda's pictures on all of the stones, which I'll be presenting later on the Wilmington Facebook page. How do we say goodbye in sign language? <laughs>